There once was a hunter in the woods, who, after a long day of hunting, was in the middle of an immense forest. It was getting dark, and having lost his bearings, he decided to head in one direction until he was clear of the increasingly oppressive foliage. After what seemed like hours, he came across a cabin in a small clearing. Realizing how dark it had grown, he decided to see if he could stay there for the night. He approached, and found the door ajar. Nobody was inside. The hunter flopped down on the single bed, deciding to explain himself to the owner in the morning. As he looked around, he was surprised to see the walls adorned by many portraits, all painted in incredible detail. Without exception, they appeared to be staring down at him, their features twisted into looks of hatred, staring back. He grew increasingly uncomfortable, making a concentrated effort to ignore the hateful faces. He turned to face the wall, and exhausted, he fell into a restless sleep. Face down in an unfamiliar bed, he turned blinking into unexpected morning sunlight. Looking up, he discovered that the cabin had no portraits, only windows. I don't know why I looked up, but when I did, I saw him there. He stood against my window. His forehead rested against the glass, and his eyes were still and light, and he smiled a lipstick-red, cartoonish grin, and he just stood there in the window. My wife was upstairs sleeping. My son was in his crib, and I couldn't move. I froze and watched him looking past me through the glass. Oh, please, no. His smile never moved, but he put a hand up and slid it down the glass, watching me. With matted hair and yellow skin and face, I couldn't do anything. I just stayed there, frozen. Feet still in the bushes I was pruning, looking into my house, he stood against my window. Last night, a friend rushed me out of the house to catch the opening act at a local bar's music night. After a few drinks, I realized my phone wasn't in my pocket. I checked the table we were sitting at, the bar, the bathrooms, and after no luck, I used my friend's phone to call mine. After two rings, someone answered. They gave out a low, raspy giggle and hung up. They didn't answer again. I eventually gave it up as a lost cause and headed home. I found my phone laying on my nightstand, right where I left it. Karen Krautz had always been on the adventurous side. Oftentimes, a relaxing vacation with her family meant doing as many excursions and activities as possible. On the weekends, Karen would find herself in some faraway forest or jungle. Surviving in the wilderness alone was her only escape from her hectic, business-filled life she encountered in the city. One trip she took had always stuck with her, even to this day. She was camping out in the thick mountainous woods of Flathead National Forest located in northeastern Montana. Her trip had begun like any other, Karen making sure to document everything she did on a small film camera. But as the trip went on, it began to feel different. She felt as if someone was constantly watching her from a distance. She noticed the sound of branches snapping outside her tent at night, or scraps of her own food rations found miles away. Karen attributed the disturbances to the native animals that inhabited that area. When she got home some days later, Karen went into the store to develop her pictures. After looking at them, she went white with fear. The pictures displayed Karen in her tent at night, sleeping. Many different angles were taken over several different nights. The last picture on the roll showed what appeared to be a disfigured man stepping out of her tent. Karen's feet could be seen in her sleeping bag in the corner of the frame. Karen never went camping again. In 2003, in the Northeast United States, there was an incident involving a strange, human-like creature which attracted a lot of attention from local media. After the story initially broke, 
most online and written documents were mysteriously destroyed. Although these accounts were gone, sightings of the creature continued to become even more frequent. What's odd is that many people reacted differently to the creature. In fact, the emotions experienced range from traumatic levels of fright to an almost childlike sense of curiosity. The sightings continued. And so the hunt for more information began. Finally, in 2006, a collaboration of various researchers made a chilling discovery. They had unearthed nearly two dozen documents dating from the 12th century to the present day, all of them describing various sightings of a creature called the Rake. The sighting that stood out the most was a woman's account that dated from the same year of the discovery. An a synopsis is provided below. A woman awoke in the middle of the night and accidentally ended up waking her husband as well. She apologized, and her husband turned around to look at her. He gasped and immediately grabbed his wife, fearing for her safety. At the foot of their bed, sitting and facing away from them, was the infamous creature which was described as looking like a big, hairless dog. While the couple's eyes were still adjusting to the dark, the creature sprang up and crouched less than a foot from the husband's face. It stared at him for a while then made a dash for their children's bedrooms. The terrified couple immediately ran after it, fearing the worst for their children, but they were too late. They ran straight to their daughter's room, only to find her mutilated and close to death. As their daughter was dying, her final words were, He is the rake. Then, as mysteriously as it had appeared, the rake disappeared, never to be seen again.